sell an arena? The ones up top, that's right. And so the other thing is as you add to the height of the arena, the size of the arena, that significantly drives the costs up, which also is gonna get passed along to the fans. And so from a construction standpoint, from a fan affordability standpoint, from uh, atmosphere standpoint, and looking at our historical data from tickets getting scanned in, tickets sold, all the different things, we really feel like this is a good solid number. And when you, it, it doesn't matter if, if your arena seats 5,000, if your arena seats 15,000, the ones that are the hardest to sell are the highest seats in the arena. There is a perception about this, about that, that is not unique to Alabama. And so we had a lot of internal discussion about that and really do feel like this is a this is a good balance between trying to make this be as affordable project as possible, affordable for our fan base to be able to come to the games, and then at the same time to create the atmosphere that we want to have uh, for every single game, no matter who we're playing. And uh, we, we think, um, and, and obviously this is not saying this can't change a little bit, it potentially can, but we really feel from the research that we've done, I'm not going to name the school, but one of the arenas we went and visited, um, and and we've listed most of the ones we went and visited, but that we didn't list all the conversations we've had. If they had to do it over again, most most of the ones we've talked to would be more, much more efficient with their numbers or a little bit little bit smaller than what they've done. Not all of them, but some of them. Mike. Yeah, Greg, now that you've started down the path of a, a new arena, have, has there been any discussions or early thoughts just about the future of Coleman? And does this affect any of the, the practice facilities at all for, for men's or women's basketball? Yeah, so uh, we obviously have, a, we tried to point that out yesterday. We have a lot of infrastructure in Coleman that we use all around, all, all year round. Uh, our men's basketball practice setup in there is really good with the weight room right next to it. We actually would like to move women's basketball to Coleman long term from a practice standpoint, weight room, day to day locker room. Like what we've said, the new proposed arena would be a competition only facility. Not to say you couldn't practice there. They will at times. Uh, I used to work at Kentucky a long time ago and they played at Rupp. Men's basketball did and women's did occasionally. And then but they practice day to day on campus. That's and kind of like we have Bryant Denny. We practice right here at Malmore, right? And then we go play our games and occasionally practice at Bryant Denny. Um, and so we'll still have all the infra infrastructure that we have at Coleman still be in use. Hopefully move um, women's basketball over to Coleman and build them a practice gym equivalent to the men's. And then we would have, uh, you know, Foster become a volleyball only facility. And you can do things with the court and all the space around there that could be really beneficial to Rashinda and her program. So, uh, and then on top of that, we, we did do some study about what does it look like if, uh, you know, we, we brought some of these operations up to a new arena and just from a day-to-day -day, uh, standpoint, it, it's a lot more efficient to keep it right where it is from strength conditioning uh, to nutrition, to medical, all the different things. So that's where, uh, that's the path that we went down with that and decided that we need to continue to use Coleman on a regular basis. Charlie. Yeah, Greg, you mentioned looking at some of the other arenas across the country, but just looking at the renderings you guys put out, did you take any time when you guys were in Indianapolis to, to look at Lucas Oil Stadium? Yeah, I've actually been to Lucas many times over the years. Uh, they did host a Final Four. Uh, I think that may have been the first time I ever went there um, and been there several times since then. Uh, I've always thought driving up there the first time seeing it, that had a, that had a really good look to it and we think some of the the architecture of that fits very well within our campus and uh so i i make sure i say it right it's the classic revival look right and uh we we, we did take that into consideration um we thought the idea of having a uh a roof that looks different than what we have with coleman would be a good thing uh, and uh and so we spent quite a bit of time discussing what the what this the, the roof line and everything else would look like and and this is our preliminary, uh, 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 I guess, look at it and think that it's a very good start. Nick? Yeah, you mentioned some of the potential locations yesterday, but um, to you, I mean, what are some of the most important uh, things when you're looking at location? What will be the thing that kind of determines where it ends up? 
Well, obviously, we, uh, the board of trustees uh, has has processes that we go through that. So we did so some initial looks. And I think just in, in conceptually, though, we want something that our student body can have easy easy accessibility to. Uh, and you know, one of the ones that we put forward as a potential site uh, up above the RV parking and and softball. Uh, obviously, the, a lot of the new dorms can walk to there very easily. A lot of the fraternity houses have access there. Uh, our campus shuttle system goes right by that, that area. Um, but I think accessibility for the students, ingress and egress for the for the uh, general fans to be able to get in and out of there, I think is, is helpful. Uh, uh, Coleman does have a lot of challenges with that. And even, and I pointed out yesterday, even with the new parking garage uh, right here, not too far from where I'm sitting here, on game days when you have an event when everybody leaves at the same time you know it's not made for that it's designed to have you know traffic flow throughout the day in and out and uh and so we, we think parking for our fans and accessibility uh, to the main arteries is a good thing and so all those things will be taken into consideration and i know our recommendations will be listened to and we'll see if there maybe there, maybe there's something else out there we haven't thought of yet as, as far as the site goes but uh we did try to do some due diligence on due diligence on that and give some feedback that we think makes sense for both our student body and our fans and uh and you know i do think having it on campus is a really positive thing for everybody tony yeah, Greg, uh, two questions. First off, uh, with Coleman kind of being more open, has there been thoughts of making that more of a, a an events venue is because it just has more possibilities now? And then secondly, just how difficult was this all to get done in, in the middle of a pandemic and, and what you know really went into that? Well, as far as Coleman, we're, we're really early on that, Tony. Uh, we have some we have some ideas. I think the idea of, of making sure what the day-to-day -day operations we have there continue at the level we expect is a, is a high priority uh as well as uh potentially moving over our women's basketball program and then updating what we do for gymnastics as well uh so i think those are the forefront what what that means for everything else in coleman the space that we have you know we may end up utilizing again make sure i say may all right please don't take this as the gospel uh, you know, we may end up utilize, utilizing some of the court space that's currently there. For some, we may, you know, potentially do you look at removing some of the seating that's there because we can make better use of the space. Again, all of that, please, if you're going to write that, include this part. All of that is is certainly early on in preliminary discussions, and we have a long ways to go and processes to go through before we uh, will have a landing spot there. As far as doing this in a pandemic, yeah, obviously our world was. Uh, um, very disrupted by the last two years and everything going on with with uh with covid and uh, and we've tried to do our very best as a department to respect the virus respect one another and do everything we could to move forward safely i think we've done a a, a, a good job of that proud of the efforts of our student athletes our coaches our staff and our fans have done a really good job adjusting to the realities that we we're all facing and at the same time too i think you know the momentum we have as a department is something that we just can't sit back and say hey we're alabama we're going to be fine we want to continue to reinvest in our success and so to you know we, we while we have tried to be very respectful of everything going on we wanted to do uh, everything we could to move forward and and, uh, and i think what what took place yesterday and then i know the board of trustees official approval today certainly shows that we okay. continue to uh, do everything we can to we go move here? forward in in, you know, in, it's, it's in spite of the challenges that are out, out the, the solution rather than focusing on and last question here with joe greg you just mentioned reinvesting in your success i'm wondering how much of uh how much of coach Oates's uh, early success in his tenure is uh tied into what was tied into the uh acceleration of this project and then secondly if i may uh i've heard dana talk uh, a lot lately about having an intimidating home uh home environment uh and i think gymnastics is kind of the excitement has been a little overlooked for them how much will this new project kind of mean to dana and her program as well thank you yeah, yeah i'll start on the, on with dana obviously like, had a great year last year with, uh, with our gymnastics program, won in the SECs, uh, and you know, incredible success in our history. You know, we need to make sure we do everything we can to continue to move that forward for the future. That's important to our university. It's important to the young women in our program and all the alums. 
And so I think this was a, this type of environment will be very, very good for our gymnastics program. Uh, as far as the success of, of Nate, um, you know, he's, he hit the ground running from the second we landed in town. Has brought a lot of energy, enthusiasm to our, our men's basketball program. Yeah, you know, I, I always say a, a positive yeah, attitude, yeah, yeah, energy, yeah, enthusiasm yeah, is contagious, yeah, just like a negative yeah. attitude is contagious too. And uh, I think there is a lot of enthusiasm that we, you know, we had a we had a phase two of the Crimson Standard on the books as an idea before we, you know, most of our fan base knew who NATO was, right? And so this is still within the time frames of what we were talking about as far as a priority. But I think the enthusiasm for what he has done and his, the, the team and the coaches have done is certainly something that gives us momentum to, to move these things forward. And uh, we're trying to do our very best to make sure we take advantage of that and uh, very pleased with the progress of, of, of our men's basketball program and, and, and last year with our women's program, getting back to the tournament for the first time in 22 years. And that, you know that's important as well because you know, we want to have success across the board here at the University of Alabama and everything we do. All right. Hey, good to see y'all. I think he just said all right. Thanks, everyone. Roll Tide. Thanks, Greg. Roll Tide. Thanks. Record.